Hello and welcome to this lecture and in this lecture what we are going to do is that we are going to learn how to basically go ahead retrieve multiple values from a database and display those values in our application in a list view. So as you could see in this Firebase database I have added a bunch of values. So this Firebase database actually includes a list of users which is Tom, Rob and John and what we wish to do is that we wish to extract these user values and display them in a list view. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that. So let me just go ahead and minimize this thing and we basically have our usual setup and this is actually the on data change method from the previous lecture. So let me just remove the reference to this. So here we basically have the basic setup wherein we have a reference to the database and as usual we have the setup to add multiple values to our app. So now what we want to do is that first we want to get a reference to the users field. So right now we have the reference to the root of the database. So let's get a reference to users by typing in users over here and we have a reference to them. So the next thing which you need to do is that you do need to make sure that you have a list view in your application. So as you could see uh, right now we have uh, this thing right here which is the layout design from the previous lecture. So what we will do is that we will remove everything from here because we don't want it as of now. And here instead of the linear layout we will add a list view and the width is going to be match parent. and the height is going to be match parent as well. So let's assume that it's going to fill up the entire thing and let's also give it an ID. So let's say the ID is going to be at plus ID. Let's say new list view. So once we have this list view set up wherein we could display items, let's hop on to the Java code. And in here, after having a reference to the users field, the next thing which you need to do is that you need to go ahead and have a reference to the list view as well. Which, so that's going to be list view and it's better if you declare it over here. So instead of this text view, let's go ahead and type in private list view list view. And also it's better if you make these fields private as well. I've actually not made them but it's actually a good practice to do so. So list view equals let's type cast it to list view and I guess this should be in small letters and then as usual we have the find view by id r dot id dot new list view so once we have reference to this list view the next thing which you need to do is that you do need to get values from the database and store them into some kind of data structure. So in order to do that we do need to have an array adapter and what that array adapter is going to do is that it's actually going to take those values and put them up in a list view. So what we do here is that we first declare an array adapter. So what that array adapter is actually going to do is that it's actually going to take the array list which we are going to create right now. So the array list is the data structure which is going to hold up the list values and the array adapter is going to help us to take that array list and put those array list values into the list view. So let's first go ahead and create an array list over here. So we will have private array list that's going to be of the type string and let's name this uh, as m user name as it's going to store the username value equals new array list and once we have the array list let's also go ahead and create an array adapter over here so we type in final array adapter and this is going to be of the type string Let's name this array adapter as array adapter equals new array adapter string and this is going to take a few parameters. So as you could see these are the parameters which it's going to take. So the first parameter is going to be a reference. So we pass in this and then the next parameter is going to be the layout. So we type android dot r dot layout dot simple list item one which is the layout type. And then what you need to do is that you need to pass in uh, the array list to this which is m username. So let's pass in m username over here. And once we are done with this we are basically good to go. So now what we want to do is that we want to take this list view and set that array adapter to that particular list view. 
so list view dot set adapter and pass in the array adapter over here and once this thing is done we are basically good to go now also what we want to do is that we want to make sure that whenever some value in the database changes that change should be reflected into our list view as well so for that what we do is that we ha already have a reference to the users and what we will do is that instead of adding a value listener to it we will add the child event listener so the child event listener is actually similar to the value event listener but instead it's going to see when the child value is changed so we will type in myref dot add child event listener new child event listener and it's also going to have multiple methods so instead of two methods like the ev value event listener we have one two three four and five methods so make sure to include a semicolon over here and amongst these five methods we will be only using the we will only use this method which is on child added that is when we go ahead and add a new child so what we do here is that we get this string value from here so what we do here is that we get the value which is the added value newly added value from the data snapshot so we type a string value equals data snapshot dot get value and to this we pass in string dot class and then what we do is that we want to add that value to the array list which is this array list which is called as m username so we type m username dot add and add that value which is the newly added value and once this thing is done what we do is that we notify this change to the array adapter as well so that it's going to adapt to the new value so array adapter dot notify data set changed and we are basically good to go so once this thing is done let's go ahead save this code and run this application on our device and see how this thing works okay so the application is up and running and let me just record my screen so that you'll be able to see that so as you could see we have three list items john tom and rob and i have actually modified my database a little bit but that's okay so let's go ahead and try to add another value and see how the change is reflected in our app so let me just go ahead and add another value so this is user number four and let me just pull up the value as let's say Harry so when I click add as you could see Harry is added to the list now let me just go ahead and delete Rob from the list so when I hit delete let's see what happens as you could see there is no change reflected in our list because we have not yet added the code so as to what happens uh, when we go ahead and execute the delete on remove on child removed method so what you could do is that you could add in the code when you which you want to execute on removing the child so we have not yet done that we have just written the code for what happens when the child gets added so that's it for this lecture and i hope you guys were able to understand how to go ahead and get the items from the firebase database and add them up in a list view so the procedure was quite simple what you simply need to do is that you need to go ahead and the first thing which you need to do is that you need to have a proper data structure to store your data so in this case we have used an array list so we stored all the elements in the array list and after storing the elements into the array list we have created an array adapter then we have basically set the list view to the array adapter and what we have done here is that we had the reference to the root which is called as users that is the root which you wish to check for and then after having a reference to it we have added a new thing which is called as the child event listener so what the child event listener does is that it basically listens to each and every child in that particular root and whenever it notices that a certain child is changed it actually goes ahead and changes its values and when I actually run this application for the very first time I actually got an error and that's maybe because uh, I have used the same project I have actually used the same Android Studio project and I have made changes to it so whenever you get a result in such cases what you simply need to do is that you need to go to build first you need to click on clean project so it's actually going to take a while for you to clean the project and after that you can again go to build and click on rebuild project so once you are done that if you have any errors in your code despite your code being correct then those errors are going to be removed so that's it for this lecture and i hope you guys were able to understand the concept of retrieving data 
from firebase and displaying them in the list view so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time thank you